For 50 years, the Malian Empire was one of the wealthiest in the world. Prosperity brought by the Trans-Saharan gold and salt trade made Mali a center of culture, learning, and economic opportunity. However, under the rule of Mansa Musa, 1312 to 1337, Mali's wealth may have also sown the seeds of its eventual decline. In today's video, we go beyond the surface to uncover the unexpected consequences that Mansa Musa's generosity brought upon the Malian Empire. It's a story of fortunes gained and lost, of power and its pitfalls, and of the delicate balance between displays of wealth and the responsibility of leadership. So sit back, relax, hit that like button to boost our chances against the algorithm, and enjoy the show. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well, so you never miss our videos. Welcome to this edition of Money Thinkers. Mansa Musa was like the real-life Tony Stark, in a sense. He was rich, he was powerful, and he was super generous. He once spent so much money on a party that it crashed the Egyptian economy. That's like if Tony Stark threw a party and everyone in New York City got free alcohol. The city would be trashed in, like, an hour. Of course, Mansa Musa's generosity wasn't all fun and games. He also used his wealth to build mosques, universities, and other infrastructure. He even funded a famous pilgrimage to Mecca, which brought a lot of attention to the Mali Empire. Behind the scenes, however, the consequences of Mansa Musa's generosity were brewing, and they would eventually shape the destiny of an empire. So fasten your seatbelts and join me on this captivating journey where we'll explore the uncharted territories of history, uncovering the impact of Mansa Musa's actions and revealing the hidden truths that history often overlooks. When Mansa Musa rose to power in 1312, the Malian Empire was already rich from the gold mines of Bambuk and control of salt trade routes that brought wealth from caravans. However, under Mansa Musa, Mali's golden age came to an apex. As described by contemporary scholar Ibn Khaldun, gold was so plentiful that they collected it in baskets. The Malian Empire was like Wakanda, but in real life, it was rich, powerful, and had a thriving culture. And much like T'Challa, Mansa Musa was a benevolent ruler who used his wealth to help his people. The Malian Empire was rich in natural resources, including gold, salt, and copper. It also had a thriving trade network that stretched from the Mediterranean Sea to the Gulf of Guinea. This trade network brought a lot of wealth to the empire, which Mansa Musa used to build mosques, universities, and other infrastructure. Mansa Musa, known as the Lion of Mali, wasn't just a ruler of immense wealth. He was also celebrated for his unwavering generosity. One of the defining moments in his legacy was his iconic pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca, a journey that would leave an indelible mark on the world. In 1324, Mansa Musa embarked on a pilgrimage to Mecca that displayed Mali's new heights of wealth. During this historic pilgrimage, Mansa Musa demonstrated unprecedented generosity. As he traveled through cities and towns, he gave huge ingots to beggars, overpaid at bazaars, and tipped with fistfuls of gold dust. Musa is also said to have ordered the construction of a new mosque for him to pray at every Friday. Furthermore, he made formal charitable donations of 20,000 ounces of gold each at Cairo, Mecca, and Medina, worth about $120 million today. His generosity knew no bounds, and news of his deeds spread far and wide. His generosity was so great that it is said that he caused a temporary inflation in the Egyptian economy, depreciating the value of gold by 25% in Cairo for more than a decade. It raised the profile of the Malian Empire to unprecedented heights, capturing the attention of distant lands and earning admiration from rulers and common people alike. The empire's name resonated across borders, solidifying its status as a force to be reckoned with. Moreover, Mansa Musa's acts of generosity fostered invaluable diplomatic relations. His gifts and benevolence created bridges between the Malian Empire and neighboring kingdoms, sparking alliances and trade partnerships that further bolstered the empire's influence. It was a testament to the soft power wielded by Mansa Musa's open-heartedness. The Malian Empire flourished as a result of Mansa Musa's benevolent reign. The influx of wealth and increased prestige brought forth an era of economic prosperity, cultural exchange, and intellectual growth. 
it was a golden age for the empire and its people. However, with this great prosperity came unforeseen challenges and consequences. The resource curse is a phenomenon that occurs when countries with abundant natural resources, such as oil or minerals, experience slower economic growth and more political instability than countries with fewer natural resources. This is because countries with abundant natural resources often rely on these resources for the majority of their income, which can make them vulnerable to fluctuations in the global market. Additionally, the presence of natural resources can lead to corruption and conflict as individuals and groups compete for control of these resources. The resource curse can profoundly impact nations, but do abundant resources inevitably spell doom? Weigh in below. Comment blessing if you believe a country's natural wealth can be prudently stewarded for long-term prosperity. Comment burden if you think resource abundance often leads to negative consequences like instability and corruption. Either way, nations must walk a delicate balance, so share your perspective. I'm keen to read thoughtful responses on how countries can best leverage their natural wealth for sustainable development. The instantaneous and incalculable influx of gold into Cairo, Mecca, and Medina caused hyperinflation never seen before or since, nearly impoverishing all three great cities for over 10 years. Assuming a roughly equal distribution of the total gold load across all those aforementioned camels, Musa effectively rendered at least 71,000 pounds of gold worthless by simply giving it away in climates where it was scarce and valuable. This means that in terms of gold devaluation alone, the damage Musa's pilgrimage caused would have amounted to $1.5 billion today. Yeah, Mansa Musa was a generous ruler, but his lavish spending and indiscriminate generosity led to hyperinflation, eventually destabilizing his empire's economy. He spent so much money on his pilgrimage to Mecca, as well as on other projects, that he eventually bankrupted the empire. This led to a decrease in trade, as people were no longer willing to trade with the empire since they did not trust the currency. The sudden influx of gold led to inflation, as the value of gold decreased. This made it difficult for people to afford basic necessities, leading to chaos and anarchy. The social fabric of the Malian Empire also felt the repercussions of Mansa Musa's generosity. The sudden influx of gold enriched some segments of the population while leaving others behind. Those who benefited from the influx gained wealth and influence, fueling resentment among those who saw only price inflation and economic turmoil. Tensions emerged between different social groups. With the strain on the empire's resources, disruption of trade routes, and social unrest caused by the sudden influx of gold, you can tell what happened next. Following Mansa Musa's death in 1337 and the entry of his sons into power, the once prosperous Malian Empire found itself grappling with the aftermath of economic collapse. With hyperinflation and strained resources, the empire's economic power waned, and its political stability crumbled. Externally, rival kingdoms saw the weakened and divided Malian Empire as an opportunity to expand their power. The Tuareg took control of the trans-Saharan trade routes, cutting off Mali's commerce lifelines. The Songhai Empire, based in Gao to the east, launched a series of invasions into Malian territory. They captured Timbuktu in 1433 and Gao in 1468, dealing decisive blows that shattered Mali's power. Within a few decades, the once vast Malian Empire had collapsed into a collection of fractious states. The same regions that had been united under Mansa Musa were now divided among competing rulers and principalities. Mali's decline was precipitated by economic turmoil that disrupted social cohesion and weakened central authority. The resultant instability allowed external rivals to pick off territories one by one. Soon, very little remained of the Golden Age empire Mansa Musa had presided over. While Mansa Musa's extravagant spending and hyperinflation deeply disrupted Mali's economy, not all of the blame for the empire's decline can be placed on his shoulders. Other factors beyond his control also contributed to Mali's fall from grace. For one, Mali's gold deposits were finite. Eventually, the empire was bound to run out of gold or see diminishing yields from its mines. This natural resource limitation would have strained Mali's economy over time, regardless of Musa's actions. Secondly, the trans-Saharan trade routes that had made Mali so wealthy were vulnerable. 
external politics and pressures, as well as incidents like droughts and warfare, threatened these commerce links. Any disruptions to trade would have impacted Mali severely. Thirdly, expanding rival empires like Songhai posed a growing threat to Mali. Even without Musa triggering economic imbalances, Mali likely would have eventually faced invasion attempts due to its declining military capabilities relative to neighbors. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage merely accelerated pre-existing trends that were already pushing Mali toward instability and decline. Overspending and inflation exacerbated underlying structural issues and aggravated internal tensions. But without these other issues, limited resources, vulnerable trade networks, and rising regional threats, Mali would still have faced difficulties maintaining its elite status over time. So while Mansa Musa's generosity did contribute to Mali's eventual fall, we should be careful not to place all the blame solely on his shoulders. Mali was a victim of circumstances beyond any single ruler's control finite natural resources, unstable commerce links, and shifting geopolitical realities. No amount of wisdom or restraint could have fully insulated Mali from these macro forces forever. The crucial lesson, then, is not that generosity and benevolence should be avoided. Instead, it is that even the most well-intentioned actions occur within complex systems shaped by multitudes of interrelated factors. True leadership requires the wisdom to navigate this complexity, balancing virtue with prudence while navigating inevitable constraints. So remember, when your boss offers to give you that $20,000 raise, think twice. It might crash the company's economy and get you all fired. Just kidding, but you get the point. Too much wealth, spent too quickly and unwisely, can wreak havoc on even the mightiest of kingdoms. The story of Mali's fall from grace has made me reflect again on power, leadership, and governance. How can leaders balance generosity with sustainability? When is benevolence virtuous, and when does it risk becoming irresponsible? I would love for you to share your thoughts with me in the comments. In the end, the story of Mansa Musa reveals that ultimate prosperity depends less on how much wealth a nation accumulates and more on how that wealth is balanced, distributed, and governed. Absolute power does not grant absolute wisdom, but wisdom acquires influence by balancing virtue with prudence while navigating inevitable constraints. As individuals, our privilege impels us to practice generosity that fosters sustainability and strengthens resilience. If you enjoyed this video, let us know by subscribing to our channel and hitting that notification bell so you are notified when we release new stories from the world of finance. Until the next video, cheers.